All right, so what is up guys? In this video, I'm going to be covering live data and view models and how to use them in Android Studio. And this is going to be a very simplified tutorial so you can get your head around it and can get started immediately with using it. So as you can see here, we have a demo increment app. So every time we click on plus one, you'll see plus one. And if it is a odd number, it will say false. And if it is an even number, it will say true. So let's just continue clicking on that. And usually when you create some sort of app, you have to handle the data. You need to put it in a saved state. And most of the time when you turn the phone, it will destroy the data and recreate it because it all, it's all part of the life cycles. And if you don't know what life cycles are, I definitely recommend you read up on that somewhere on Google. Otherwise, I will make a video very soon about life cycles using the lifecycle aware components that have been provided by the Google architecture. But continuing on with this tutorial, as you can see, each time we turn it around, it remains on false and remains on five. And as soon as we click on plus one, it continues exactly where we left off. So that's gonna be the demo app that I'm gonna be showing you how to create. And we can get started immediately by going to our Android Studio project. And the first thing we want to do is go to our Gradle scripts and click on build.gradle. And inside here, where it says dependencies, we have to add two dependencies. And one's going to be for the view model and one's gonna be for the live data. And we definitely have to also add this definition so it knows exactly which version to insert. And of course, I will leave all of this in the description below. So all you have to do is copy and paste that in your own project. But as soon as you've done that, we can go ahead and click on sync now. And as soon as we have successfully synced our project, we can go ahead and close this window, close our Gradle scripts and open our res folder so we can open our layout folder and finally go to our activity main XML. Then inside here, we are going to go to split view so we can see what we're doing. And I'm just going to paste in the exact same layout from my previous project. So the first thing I did is add a relative layout just to keep things simple since it's a very simple layout. And then I added a text view for our increment number so essentially all it says is that it has an ID of TV underscore text view with the text set to zero and a text size of 40 SP. Then immediately below that, I have the text view that takes care of the Boolean. So I provided it with a layout above attribute, which put it right above the increments text view. And I gave it an ID of TV underscore Boolean text. Then I gave it a text of three dots and I set the text size to 20 SP. And finally, we have a button that will make everything do what we want it to do. So we called it button underscore button, and it is set right below the TV underscore text view, so right below the increment number. And I gave it a margin of 10 dp with a background color of black and a text of plus one with a text color of color white. So it's kind of like an inverted button. And anyways, that's all we have to do in our activity main XML. Then we can go ahead and create a view model class. So to do this, we will go to our package name and inside here, we'll create a new Kotlin file class and call this test view model. So what is a view model? A view model is a class that is designed to store and manage UI related data in a lifecycle conscious way. But with that being said, let's continue. So we'll type in variable number and that will equal zero. And then we have to create some live data and live data is what we are going to use to actually notify the program that something has changed and it will update it automatically for us. So we don't have to worry about forgotten updated views and keeping things up to date. So to do this, we're gonna type in first a new value and we're gonna call this current number. And right before we continue, I forgot to extend our view model class. So we have to type in extends view model. And once we've done that, we can actually continue with this. So current number of type mutable live data. And this one's going to be of type int. And we're going to use a lazy initializer. Then inside here, we need to type in mutable live data of type int and that will take care of that. So every time we refer to this, it will create a mutable live data object and that will be used to store our number and to update it. And then let's also copy that for the Boolean, except here we are going to type in current Boolean and it's gonna be of type Boolean. And this also should be updated to type Boolean. So after we have finished our view model, we can go ahead and go to our main activity class and get started by instantiating our view model. So the first thing we have to do is create a late init variable of type view model, which will take our test view model and we will instantiate it right below. So the first thing we have to do is refer to our view model and that's going to equal a view model provider, which will take the context 
of our main activity, which is this. And then we need to get the view model that we want to use. So we'll type in test view model, and that's gonna be class.java. Then let's go down and create a function that increments our text. So we can do private function increment text. And inside here, we will add our button and set an on click listener. And then we can refer to our view model and we need to get the current number that we want to increment, which was this one over here. And we need to set the value to it. And then with that, we can do plus plus view model dot number. And incrementing this will indeed increment this number over here which will live with our view model. So when we turn the screen, it will stay there and it will stay at the current number. And for the Boolean, we'll do something that's very similar. We'll type in view model dot current Boolean and we will set the value to view model dot number. And if that is divisible by two, then we will set that to true and it will be an even number. Otherwise it will be set to false and that will be an odd number. So essentially what I did is create a button that switches between true and false each other click and increments the number while it does it. So that's all that's happening in this private function over here. Now there's only one last thing we have to do is create an observer that actually observes when this value gets set. So it updates our text view for us and we don't have to worry about calling set text every single time in our button. So down here we can type in view model dot current number and then we should type in observe and it's gonna take an owner and we need to provide an observer. And this observer is gonna provide us with the it keyword, which provides us with the currently updated value, the one that is up to date. And with that, we can just type in our TV underscore text view and write set text. And we're gonna take it to string. So it will just take the latest number that has been updated and put it in our text view. Then we can just copy and paste that. And we're gonna write view model dot current Boolean. And as you can see, it's gonna create another observer which provides us with the latest updated information for the Boolean as well. And we can also refer to that by typing it to string. But this time we are going to replace the text view with the TV underscore Boolean text. So one more time, we created a button which updated the value of the current number, which is a live data object. And then up here, we created an observer that took care to actually update the text view every time this value has been changed. And as you can see in our test view model, all the values are being used and it keeps the architecture of our app quite clean. All right, and I absolutely forgot to call our increment text button. So definitely make sure to actually add this on your onCreate method. And then we can click on play again. Perfect, so it has loaded, let's try it out. So let's click on plus one. And as you can see, the number has been loaded. And if we rotate the screen, it is still at one and it is still a false Boolean. And if we click plus again, it will continuously increment the text. So let's flip it one more time and then continuously click on it. So this definitely takes care of all the UI related updating that we had to do for this app. And you really shouldn't confuse this with saving the data because as soon as you close this app, this app will get rid of all the data that was not saved. And since we didn't really assign this app any kind of shared preference or room database, it will just delete everything and start it afresh as soon as we restart the app. But with that being said, those were the very basics of using the view model and the live data components from the Google architecture. And in the next video, I will be discussing how to use the lifecycle component. And after that, we should be able to actually create an app using all of this information and using the room database. So there's a lot of stuff to learn and I'll be working on that in the next few days. But with that being said, I will see you guys in the next video.